Hello and um, welcome. This is uh, the first, well, the main bit of um, the measuring the effectiveness of the workforce. Uh, we're going to be talking about labour turnover, why it should be calculated. Uh, we're going to go through a few examples. Uh, we're going to go through uh, about labour productivity, uh, the output per employee. Well, labour productivity is actually defined to output per employee, labour cost, and UK productivity. We're going to be going over that. Um, and absenteeism. And uh, obviously why absenteeism should be uh, calculated. And uh, that that's it really for this uh, short video. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to be doing is... Uh, about labour turnover. Now, uh, just put it on here. Labour turnover. And you may be asking me, well, what is labour turnover? Uh, well, labour turnover uh, refers to the amount of workers. So you see, that makes any difference. Yeah. The amount of workers that uh, leave uh, an organisation in a given period of time, maybe uh, generally calculated over uh, about a year. So, uh, how do we work this out is in terms in terms of a percentage, uh, let's say. So, labour turnover, you've got uh, your average number of... Uh, wait, oh, sorry, yeah, your number of uh, employees that have left. So, I'll just put short it, number of uh, leaving employees. Well, that's not very really well worded. Over your average times a hundred. Now that's your, your average number of employees, and, and that is they've done it in average because some employees leave, some employees come, uh, and this is taken into account and the ins and outs of the employees. So sounds wrong, but trust me. Now the average. Uh, is about 16% for the UK. So average is 16% per year leave. And obviously you think, well, if 16% leave, then well, it's not very good. You're going to be down to like zero people, minus two in a couple of days. You'll owe people their lives, uh, which is hopefully you don't. Otherwise, uh, you know, place could not very happy. So uh, what is next? Well, um, why should labour turnover be calculated? Well, you um, need to calculate it because if it's too low, uh, you've not got a fresh talent coming into your business, uh, provoking new ideas, you've got the same people doing the same jobs, it's likely to get nowhere. However, if you have too high labour turnover, uh, that suggests something's wrong with your uh, business or, or functional idea. Uh, this could be because uh, the workers are not getting the right amount of days off. But, well, in England, you could should have 355.9 days off at least. That's my opinion. Or, or you know, otherwise I'll start to leave. So, you know, just a thought to mull around the old market. So, how do we increase, uh, decrease it? Uh, we can increase uh, motivational incentives. Uh, we're going to go over that in a later video, uh, motivational part two, if you're interested. Uh, we've got a couple of theorists. We've got grapes uh, in here. I'm not going to go over this, uh, so I'll just go over it quickly. Uh, Taylor thought it was about money. Uh, Mayo thought it was about social interaction. Abraham had a couple of ideas, he was a bit weird. Uh, and Herzberg thought it was about hygiene. Uh, so it's quite weird in general. Now, um, we're going to do, as I said, a few examples because this is a relatively short topic, so we just look at the time. So, uh, I'll put this as year. I'll create a little table for you. Year, um, like this, one, two, three, four. And you have the average number of employees. Now I'm going to make this up. So it may not have any pattern at all. At this average number of employees, uh, we'll have 40, 41, 40, and 41 again. And the number of employees that left, so I just put left, and we'll have 
one, two, three, five. So uh, you can see the number of employees that are slowly going up. So we work put this formula into this. Uh, so this should be sort of cornered off. Let's corner that off. So labor turnover, ab number of leaving employees times ab average times 100. So I'll just uh, quickly do it in my head on my calculator right now. And then let's find the calculator. Mm, she's that, found one. Bang. Cassio, good mate. So uh, average number, number of employees leaving. So 1 over 40 times 100. And that gets you... Um, 2.5%. So as the average 16, we're much low. We actually want to increase it if it's 2.5%. So this company wants to increase labour turnover because they don't like people in the organisation. Charlie, my pen doesn't like me. Uh, I won't blame it. 2 over 41. You'd expect this to be about the same or less. So 100. And obviously, the slight change, slight 1 or 2% variation, uh, we assume it's about. It should be about levelling. You know that could just be dependent on a few people wanting to go to uh, Poland or vice versa. Obviously, we're not concerned that matter. Two over forty-one times a hundred. It should get you uh, four point seven percent. It's actually four point eight, but I'll round it down incorrectly. And this is three over forty, which should get us a high number. So it's. It should be about 7.5 percent. That is actually might work. 5 over 41 times 100. And that gets us 12 percent. Now, as you can see, you might want to spot a trend. Uh, it's going from 2.5 percent to 4.7 percent to 7.5 to 12 percent. Now we're going in the right direction. Uh, the average is 16. Uh, we don't want too low, we don't want too high. Obviously that depends on what kind of business it is, um, whether you want them people leaving or, or going, as it might. Obviously the drawbacks it would cost you to train them if it's too high, and if it's too low, if it's too high, yeah, it can cost you to recruit them and train them, uh, and select them and put an advert in the paper, uh, and send sugar, Alan Sugar to go, you're fired, and they've not even started the job yet. Uh, so, you know, it's going to get quite, quite a bit of money, cost. So that's your labour turnover, hopefully you've got that and had enough time to copy it down while I've uh, gone for a little walk somewhere. So uh, we said we we're going to do labour productivity now. So uh, labour productivity is condensed into, I'll just put labour P, is condensed into uh, your output per employee. You should already start thinking of these in formulas. They're not something like B squared equals 2 squared plus U squared plus a half of A squared plus Z plus U plus F, U, uh, C. Ooh, you got close there, my matey. So you've got output per employee, output employee, you have got, uh, is it firm? Oh, labour cost per unit. Now, just with this labour cost per unit, if you're, um, I know this is a bit more on uh, the other side of the course, but uh, labour cost per unit. Now, if your cost per unit is high, it means your labour productivity is low. Uh, if you want to increase that, obviously there's a couple of bit theorists, uh, but generally you tell them, well done, good job, uh, do it well, and I'll give you a, a good slap on the, depends if you, you know, what you're on in, in the new endos there, but that's just my just to teach you. So you've got output or employee, labour cost per unit. Uh, another way to uh, measure labour productivity is the whole country against other countries, so uh, total UK hour output so for the UK the total output 
over total produced. Uh, no, total output over uh, total hours worked. As we don't put people because some people only work part time, uh, it's screw it all up if we included that. So just put total of hours worked and get it makes sense. Oh, I've kind of put the phone in there already. I should have put UK productivity. So that's UK productivity. UK productivity, output per employee. Uh, you've probably guessed that already. So it's uh, total output, uh, total number of employees, total output. of a number of employees um, your labour cost per unit is uh, obviously your total is it total labour? yeah total labour costs over was it total, total number of employees, so that can just go there or there. I'm lazy, can't bother writing it out again. So, lead productivity, output per employee, total output of a number of employees. Uh, UK output is total output of total hours worked. Labour cost per unit, so labour cost of number of employees. So you spread it out per employee. Oh, wait, sorry. The unit cost per, I didn't think that sounded right, sorry. So your total labour cost over the units produced, is it? Over total output. So that shows you over total output how much it costs you. Now if you want to find out as percentage, you tend to be 100, but just over that labour cost over total output. So that's uh, quite simple. Um, don't think I need to go over that. Um, I mean, I just wanted to keep this as uh, short as possible. And it's already starting to get on a little bit. So, uh, we'll skip the uh, example, as we've already seen uh, me attempt to draw something and it uh, didn't go well, as you probably paid attention if you did. So, we'll skip that. So, hopefully, you've got that down, put that in the formula somewhere. Uh, uh, don't worry, I will I make a summary at the end and uh, we'll go over it. So, absenteeism. What is absenteeism? Well, absenteeism is the um, number of workers as a result of uh, leaving, well, not leaving, sorry, uh, taking a day off, slacking, not doing well, or del uh, yeah, so basically deliberately being off, or just generally being off because of hygiene uh, in, in your environment, or just, you know, they've had their arm cut off, limbs cut off, and uh, you know, the heads cut off, and they're all there, just you know, like, why aren't you working? And the guy's like, you know, just got a torso on the floor, no head, and it's gonna be a bit of a problem. Obviously, no offense to anyone there, but. Yeah. If you've only got a torso, you can't have no head, no arms and no limbs, you can't do much. So, uh, yeah, a bit offensive, but sorry about that. So absenteeism, uh, it's the number of people working, uh, uh, sorry, leave, leaving for the day or uh, taking the day off or just being ill. So how can you calculate it? Well, the average sort of thing, percentage, is your average number of employees, ill, uh, average ill, I'll put it in inverted commas, average ill, um, total staff in one day, what's that, total staff times 100, and that should get your absenteeism in percentage terms uh, for one day. Now we are slowly getting towards the end of time. So, Instead of going over it, I'll just uh, go over a quick one. So why should it be calculated? Uh, our absentee should be calculated as uh, rising of that. means you're spending more on people being off. Basically, it's uh, not effective, but to 
Yeah, and you have to put more uh, motivation if more people have been off, because that could signal, well, if loads of people, I get it if one or two people are off, so you don't want it to be a little bit, you know, uh, well, you don't want it to be high, but it's going to be high, uh, just generally, but uh, you don't want it to be too high, because that means many people take a perfectly good day off work. Uh, obviously, that's going to cost you as a business, as you're still paying them to do diddly bow squat, and you might do nothing. So, hopefully, that's going over. So, uh, we'll just go over the first bit. So, uh, we talked about the effects of the workforce, labour turnover, people leaving, and number of people leaving per year. Uh, yeah, total left over average number of people in your organisation times 100. Uh, you've got your labour productivity calculated in three ways. Uh, you've got your output per worker, so total output over number of workers. Uh, your total labour cost per unit, so your total labour cost over your unit produced. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and that's your labour cost per unit. And there's total UK output, so total UK output of total hours worked. Uh, it gets you the, the UK productivity. And we talked about absenteeism, uh, which is on the board there, and why they're calculated. So let's go and give a bit of an insight. And uh, 